Yeah, this thing set up right. We could have a very good display of the aurora across uh, much of the area as we get toward late tonight, possibly all the way into Saturday as well. Now, the, our colleagues at the Space Weather Prediction Center down in Boulder, Colorado, issued a uh, geomagnetic storm watch at a G4 intensity. That's pretty impressive. I'll show you how rare that is in just a minute. Now, what happens is you have what's called a coronal mass ejection. We have had several of them in enhanced areas of activity across the sun. You can see there's a very big sunspot right there. That was the cause of it. A lot of these may merge and actually arrive at the Earth late in the day of the 10th, early on the 11th. So basically overnight tonight looks like the best time to see it. Though some effects could linger all the way into Saturday night as well. Now, as far as how far south it can be seen, if things set up correctly, maybe as far as south as Alabama, maybe all the way down to Northern California. Now, how rare is this watch? Last time they issued a watch like this was back in 2005. So that's almost 20 years ago. So. They're expecting this to be a very notable event, things set up right. Last time we actually had a G4 was on the, uh, was last year, the 23rd to the 24th of 2023. I'll show you some pictures on uh, certain intensities of the storms in just a minute. Now, space weather is very fickle, though, so if you want the latest updates on this through the day, just go to their website right there, spwc.noaa.gov. Here's the expected KP index. You can see we have a 5 between uh, 6 and 9 when it really gets going, but... It's light, at this time. it's light in this part of the country this time of year, so don't worry about that. When it starts getting dark between 9 and uh, midnight, have a KP index of 7 there. That's actually a very good for around here. It's meant to peak between about 12 and 3 o'clock. That's an 8. And even linger into a 7 all the way from 3 until the sun comes up and it gets too light to see about 5, 5.30. Now, what do those numbers mean? Here's the uh, G1 KP5 right here. You can see it going mainly across the uh, U.S.-Canadian border. A G3 KP7 just about guarantees a decent storm here that goes through um, Wyoming. And a KP9, that's way far south. But we want to know what an 8 is. You expect that to be between these two lines and maybe right there. You can see just about a guarantee across Canada. But here's the uh, likely view line. You can see right there is Wyoming right there. I'll draw it in for you. Line's right there, so it actually looks pretty good if things set up correctly, obviously. Here's what these different things mean. This is a G1 storm with KP of 5. You can see mainly on the horizon some yellow. There's also some reds here. Bumped this up to a G2, a KP of 6. You can see it stands a little bit higher. You see some nice reds here behind our radar here. And some yellows and some uh, greens down here on the horizon. Bumped this up to a G3, KP of 7. You can see it extends a lot higher in the atmosphere with those peaks. Well into the uh, above the horizon here with these uh, nice red colors there. The most intense one we have, which was the uh, G4, which was back on uh, April last year. You can see this is zoomed in a little bit. You can see, look at these uh, pinks here and the purples extending this high up in the atmosphere. I took this picture. It was a very, very impressive display. I was in awe taking these pictures that night. So how to view this? Well, first thing, you want to go to a dark place away from light pollution. This is Wyoming. There shouldn't be much of a problem. Allow your eyes to adjust to darkness. It'll take anywhere from about 15 to 30 minutes for that. Now look to the north northeast, it'll be close to the horizon as possible. That'll be the best chance of seeing it. Now it should appear as a green glow to the naked eye. Now if you want to see the colors better, get your smartphone out, look through that. If you have a standalone camera, that works really, really well too. Now if you want to take pictures of this, if you want to turn the exposure up, I'd say at least five or six seconds, maybe a little bit longer for the uh, best results. And also, especially if you're using a standalone camera, it's hard to hold the camera steady for that long, so you may get blurry pictures. So. You can balance it on a steady surface, that's good. Or you have a tripod, like this one, a big tripod right here. That works really well, too. I will be taking pictures tomorrow night. So if you can't see it, just go to our website. I should have some posted if this thing works out. Now, sky cover, obviously, you're going to want a mainly clear sky. And some very good news on this account. Now, I know you're waking up this morning. You might see some clouds around, maybe a few showers. But these should be ending as we head through the afternoon. You can see... Basically clearing from uh, northeast down to southwest, so northern parts of the area, except for maybe the mountains. Looks like mainly clear skies across this area, so very good chance of that. This is at 10 o'clock when it gets dark. One area of concern we may have for this is down here across southern Wyoming, say Rock Springs down to the south, Evanston over here south of Rollins. Even these will be mainly high clouds. It's not going to be a solid overcast as we strip through 1 o'clock toward 4 o'clock. You see, most of the areas will be mainly clear, so... Sky conditions should be very good for viewing this. And those of you watching from around the country, I know some of you watching these videos, you can see good chance of seeing this. The whole uh, West Coast looks pretty good. Also here across the Plain States, Twin Cities, uh, down toward Kansas City, St. Louis, down to the Southeast, Atlanta looks pretty good. Worst place to see it, unfortunately, looks like the uh, 
Eastern Great Lakes toward the northeast, New England. The storm system up here can keep clouds around. Also, say from southern Colorado down here to Texas, it'll be a low pressure area down here, putting a lot of clouds down here as well. And one thing somebody asked me is, uh, you know, what about the colors? How are these caused? Well, like I said before, you have plasma that's emitted off of the sun. It interacts with the upper levels of the atmosphere, those air molecules up there. Now, green's the most common color we see with the eclipse. It's caused by charged particles of oxygen anywhere from about 60 to 200 miles in, up in the uh, atmosphere. Oxygen is the second most common element in our atmosphere. Number one is nitrogen, obviously. Now, red forms at a higher altitude, about 200 to 250 miles up. Because there's less molecules up there, they can get more excited, produce a higher, a higher wavelength, and that's red. Now, if you're wondering about the uh, wavelength there, just think back to your uh, high school science. Remember Roy G. Bibb for the color spectrum? Green's the most common because it's in the middle. Our eyes are actually tuned to see green better than any other color. Red, that's the higher part of the wavelength. Now, if you want to see purple, it tends to form down lower. It's more dense, so you get a shorter wavelength there. That's why you tend to get purple or indigo at this. The other colors just tend to be a blend of the two. So if you have a chance, get out there late tonight. You can see a great display of the aurora. Happy stargazing.